Coming up, Tom Brady chats with Oprah. Plus, is this Brady's last season with the Patriots? sat down with Oprah Winfrey in an interview that aired on Sunday. Of course, Jim Gray was there. Of course he was. And I would say this interview was revealing to an extent. The things that really stood out to me, Tom Brady acknowledging publicly that the end will come sooner rather than later. And the big question that emerged to me from that is what happened since the day he sat down with Peter King after the Patriots won Super Bowl 51 over the Falcons when he said that he had all the answers to the test. And why would he retire now? He's played his whole career and now finally has all the answers to the test and wanted to continue playing so he could benefit from that knowledge. We seem a long, long way from those comments and I'm just wondering what exactly was that changed since that conversation to now was it something at home was it a family discussion was it an argument with his wife did his relationship with Bill Belichick really create that much tension and stress over the last year I mean it sounds to me like he had that conversation with Peter King before he sort of asked his wife's permission if he could play until he was 45 sort of like if I agree to go on a golf trip with buddies before I talk to my wife about it so when I initially talk to my friends about going on the trip I'm all excited but then when we have a conversation later it's like well yeah I, I'm not sure Oprah then asked Brady about his relationship with Bill Belichick Brady said quote, I love him. I love that he's an incredible coach, mentor for me, and he's pushed me in a lot of ways. Like everything, we don't agree on absolutely everything, but that's relationships, close quote. I thought Tom Brady couldn't have said it better. Every relationship goes through these things, but he is confirming that there is still more than enough respect between the two for them to get the work they need to get done done, and that the good quality equity that they've built up within their relationship over the last 18 years will far outweigh whatever tension exists or existed. Brady absolutely put to bed the idea that there's some rift between he and Bill Belichick and it's going to derail the Patriots. That storyline is dead. It's over. So then that leads to this question. Will this be Tom Brady's last season with the Patriots? It is absolutely a possibility. If I had to make an educated guess, I would say Brady plays two more seasons. He plays one more year where he does everything. He goes to OTAs. All the voluntary program, he does it all. He puts himself in the best position possible to succeed. He soaks in every aspect of being an NFL quarterback for the last time. And then he gives the Patriots one more year removed from the Jimmy Garoppolo trade. That helps them validate the decision to trade Jimmy G a little bit more. And if the Patriots do decide to bring in another quarterback, Brady would spend the entire year growing grooming him. He would put an emphasis on getting that guy ready to play in the NFL. What do I think he should do? I think if he wins the Super Bowl this year, he should retire. All right, so Brooks Koepka won his second straight U.S. Open on Sunday. I thought last week was a compelling week of golf. I love that these guys struggled. And the Phil Mickelson thing on Saturday stunned me. Stunned me. This guy is in the World Golf Hall of Fame. This guy is one of the best players ever to play. And he treated the game like it was mini golf. Now, I'm not going to crush him for what he did hitting the ball while it was moving. What was absolutely worse was what Phil said afterward. And I knew as soon as it happened, how he reacted to what happened would be key. And he absolutely blew it. Mickelson said about this being his strategy, quote, I've had multiple times where I've wanted to do that. I just finally did it. I tried to hit it as close to the hole as I could to make the next one, close quote. No, those are lies. That comment makes J.R. Smith look like Abe Lincoln. Phil, we all know what happened. You got pissed. You said, F this course, F golf you ball. I'm hitting it anyway. I don't care. That's what happened. We've all been there. If you've golfed, you wanted to do it. You needed to say after that round, you know what? I was just so angry in that moment. I snapped and I did something I shouldn't have. Instead, you try to concoct some story about it was a strategic move and you make yourself look worse. Andrew Beef Johnston, his playing partner, said after the round about what Phil said, quote, here's what his playing partner, Andrew Beef Johnston, said Mickelson said to him as they came off that 13th green, quote, I don't know what my score is. I don't know what happens now, close quote. You should have been disqualified. You didn't know you weren't going to be disqualified. Taking advantage of the rules in a strategic way is Bill Belichick having Lonnie Paxton snap the ball through the end zone in Denver so the Patriots can take a safety and their defense will have more field to defend. What Phil Mickelson did was manipulate the rules to cheat, but it was an absolute embarrassment and it will be a small black mark on his record. All right, take a pick. Which international sports competition overall is better, the Olympics, summer, or winter? or the World Cup. I go World Cup here. The only bad thing about the World Cup is that Team USA isn't always in it. Team USA always does well in the Olympics. I mean, the World Cup, though, is the biggest prize in the biggest sport in the world. I think overall there's more intrigue in the World Cup, and the prospect of winning a World Cup is exciting because it's the biggest sport in the world, and that's something that nobody in this country has ever seen. All right, final take your pick. Better food to eat with beer, fried chicken, or pizza. I love fried chicken with beer. The combination of the two is just magical, but I like pizza so much, I can't go away from pizza. Thick crust pizza especially. I just think pizza tastes a little bit better than fried chicken. I give the edge to pizza over fried chicken with beer. All right, my lock of the day, the Colorado Rockies at home tonight, plus one and a half facing the New York Mets. I'm taking the Rockies in this one. The Mets do have Jacob DeGrom going tonight. He has a sub two ERA for New York, but the Mets are also horrible. I don't trust their offense. The Rockies put up 12 runs in a loss yesterday against the Rangers, so their bats are on fire. I think they'll find a way to get to DeGrom. And I like the Rockies getting points at home at Coors Field. I'll take Colorado plus one and a half tonight over the Mets. That's my lock of the day. See you tomorrow. Well, as you know, I'm not on snap face and all that, so I don't really get those.